Tonight, tonight, beloved, we're going to be talking on a very uh, important thing. I call it important because it will be involving and including all of us. Without it, you might not be able to do anything in this season. Hallelujah. We are going to be talking about make a choice. Make a choice. For some of you who are new, who came here tonight for the first time, the place you find yourself in is Word and Life Church. This is Word and Life. We are the people who believe the Word of God, and we believe the Word of God will bring life into our lives. So we are going to be talking about make a choice. I'm happy that Brother Andrew was talking already, and I, I, I want to connect him to this. Uh, but uh, before maybe I say this, let me say the, 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 the greater one first. He mentioned something to say, while we were still sinners, God chose to love us. He did not wait until we were better. So God made a choice to love us. And tonight, as I'm standing here, I want to encourage me and you that we will stand to make choices. Are we together, beloved? So, Brother Andrew, maybe just to drop this one. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You were a sinner, not a sinner anymore. You were. So what am I saying? You might be here and you are a sinner tonight, and you might get an opportunity tonight to make a choice that you may live a sinful way, and you will no longer be called a sinner, but the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And sin and a sin life will become your testimony. Are we together? We, don't, we, are, we are not fake people. We don't say we have never sinned, but we acknowledge that sin is somewhere behind us because of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to our first scripture reading. I'm already excited. It always excites me to stand before God's people and to, to do what the Lord wants me to do. I want us to start with the first scripture reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number 24, verse number 15 to verse number 18. The book of Joshua chapter number 24 verse number 15 to verse number 18. Are we all able to see our... Yes, there we are. You've got yours, that side. You also are covered. Everyone should be smiling. You will see your things. Hallelujah. We are reading. It reads as follows. And if... This is Joshua speaking. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorite, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed? And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwell in the land. Hallelujah. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you, dear God, tonight for the privilege that we could receive your word from us. Your word is always blessed. How I pray, Lord, tonight that you will bless each and every one through your word, for your word is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, we are beginning with the race of our tonight. I want to start here. Joshua had an opportunity. He was a leader of Israel in that time. And when everybody was doing their own thing and life was chaos around, and life was busy like in our time now, I want to indicate that, beloved, beloved life is busy. Many things are happening, but in the midst of everything happening, you've got a choice to make. We are on this month, on the series of Monopoly, where I want to encourage you and say, when we talk Monopoly, important thing that is involved there is about making choices when you play that game of Monopoly. 
You've got choices that you need to make. It involves money. And you need to make decision after decision after decision. So here tonight, Joshua is standing before the congregation. He says, you guys, and I must say it tonight, out of the goodness of my heart, that the church and the gospel must never ever be forced on anyone. If you are in this church and you are forcing the gospel on people, forcing God on people, it is not the way to do it. The leaders of the gospel, they say, here's Joshua. I want you guys to choose because God gave you a will to choose. But I can only choose for me and my family. I want to see the men in this place. I want to encourage all men to say, make and make good decisions, choices for yourself and your families. And I want to say this, even in the game of Monopoly, it is for you to make choices from the beginning, which is today, until the end. So the issue of making decisions and choices, it is not going to be a one-day thing. We don't believe in that thing of saying, I am I believing in God today, that's it. We continuously, a new day, present opportunities and different challenges, and we stand to make choices every day. Can you... Uh, trust God that the Holy Spirit will help you to make, good, to make godly choices as you will also be traveling through the year. Yes, you are going to have challenges, but what choices are you going to make when you are faced with challenges? As the scripture goes down, I hear the people saying, far be it, far be it that we should be saving the gods of this land. I'm doing this because these gods are so small. They are with a small g, so that they can understand. So they say, far be it that we should be saving the gods. And they go on to say, we have seen this God releasing us from the bondage in Egypt, the place of bondage where we came from. The Lord has released us. What are they saying? They are saying, we have got a testimony and we have seen what God has done. What am I saying to me and you tonight? There is things that God has done for you and me. And those are things that we must be pointing at many times to say, because God has done this for me and has done this for my family, therefore I will choose to serve him. Can we make the decision and the choice to serve the Lord, beloved? I want to encourage you, friends. This life, if you don't make that choice, it's going to be very difficult. And by the way, another wise man says, even if you don't make a choice, you made a choice for where you are standing already. For you saying, I'm not making a choice, you made a choice to sit on that chair you are there. Thank you that you made a choice to come here tonight and sit with us and fellowship with us. Some of the members of this church, early in the morning, they made choices to come and pray in this church. I want to encourage you also to say, you can make that choice to join the prayer meetings of this church. You can make that choice to attend the services of this church to the glory of the Father. Not that you came to see the preacher. Not that you came here to, to do other things, but that you are choosing to come and serve the Lord. The main message here, Joshua is speaking, is about serving the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to challenge families. I know you might be sitting in groups. I want to challenge families. You and your family, who are you serving? Yeah, it sounds hectic. But I am challenging, I'm posing a challenge. You and your family, who are you saving? I want to extend it by saying the following quickly. Beloved, understand this. If there is anyone in your family who is not saving Christ as yet, it's your responsibility, especially as the husband and the mother, to pray for that person to also come to the table. You are accountable for your family, and we cannot rob it. Let's go to the second scripture reading. The book of Deuteronomy, I'm trying to run because of time. Look, when you stand before people, you don't have all the time. Rather use what you have quickly and, 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 and be off the side and deliver what you deliver. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 30, verse number 19 to 20. The Bible says, this is the Lord speaking. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Let, let, let's pause it there, it's fine. Beloved, the Lord is speaking, he says, before you I have placed life and death. 
I've placed blessings and curses. So it means God knew very well that man has got a will and man must make a choice. No one is going to force you into Christianity. No one is going to force you into anything. You are the person who is responsible for making decisions so that you can either live or you can die. I love this church. We are weight and life. We are for life, not against life. Death is against life. I want to encourage you and say, make choices that will preserve your life. Choices that will make you to be a better person in this life. Do not choose death. When people warn you and say, do not go there, go this side. Sometimes, listen, I want to, because I'm also a person who is operating under the law. This is coming to my spirit and I think I must say it. When, when, when we were serving here in Boxback next to BBH, there was a tanker that exploded. The people who stay here know about it. But beloved, it's so sad that when the tanker, before it explodes, a driver and law enforcement were busy warning people, stay away, stay away, stay away. People made a decision that was very horrible by, by lingering around. What am I saying? Let's learn to obey our authorities. At times, it might save our lives. These government structures are placed in place for a purpose. At times, they will save you. Yes, because of ungodly leaders, at times, it gets tough. They make decisions that are awful, and you feel, oh, Lord, can I not change the country? I know some of you feel like that at times. But look, we need to try to learn to obey our authorities so that we can live a peaceful life and, and have life and not have death. The, the next quotation that I'm bringing in place, I will just quote it. The book of Genesis, chapter number 12, verse number, verse number 1 to verse number 4. This is very serious. God is speaking to Abram, and he says to him, Abram, and here Abram had to make a choice. He says to Abram, Abram, I want you to get out of your place. I want you to go to the land that I will show you. And the Bible says Abram had to leave his place and go to the place that the Lord will show him. What am I saying? Beloved, there is times when God is going to ask you to leave your place or to leave certain things in this life. And if you are waiting for the Lord to come down with a big voice and say, oh, my servant, it is me, the Lord, your God, leave this, do not do this, you might get it wrong. The pastors, when they stand before you on Sundays and any other day of the week, and even the Christians, the beloved, when they say to you, this is right, and stay on this line, be careful, and receive the word, this is the ways that the Lord is speaking to you. You don't need to wait for the Lord to come down. Our brothers and sisters here, they are the mouthpiece of God. They, Abraham had to make a choice. So I want to say to you, is there anything that you think you need to leave tonight? I challenge you to leave that thing. There is things, certainly, there is things you can leave. There is places you can leave. I'm talking about, you know, there is harmful places that you have always frequently going there and coming from. So if you know that is not good for your life, not good for your health, Retreat. You will live long. I don't want to be harsh and say, I'm talking about places like, like bottle store, the pubs, and stuff, but I'm saying to you, make a choice to go to places that will give you life, that will bring you life. Even when it comes to friends, beloved, choice is important. Abraham make a choice. Even when it comes to friends, there is friends that you need to leave. This is a new year. You can choose whether you want to leave them or you want to remain with them. So choice is important. If you choose bad friends, you are more likely to be in a bad company all the time until you make another choice and say, these friends are not good for me. Let me take this direction. Let me say this. Many families have been broken because husbands and wives, they chose wrong friends. Can you make a good choice? Can you make a good choice? So in the book of Genesis chapter number 13, the next chapter after this, I'm now reminded of this. There is a man who is called Lot. When Abraham was coming out, he came with Lot. He came with Sarah, his wife, and everything that they had. They came to a particular place, and they were standing above on the hill. And the Lord now was speaking to Abraham and saying, now it is time that you need to part ways with Lot. This is serious. And when they stood on the hill, 
Now Abraham said to Lord, my nephew, me and you have got a livestock. Your livestock and mine cannot enjoy in one place because the place will not be enough. I want you when we are standing here to choose where you want to go. Choose where you would like to be with your livestock. And the Bible says, Lord, who came, who was behind Abraham? When Abraham was coming out, he grabbed him and said, no, I don't want to leave you here alone. I want you to benefit with where I am going and get what I'm going to get, those blessings. Do you hear what I'm saying? And now, Lot made a choice, and he looked. He saw it was green. It was beautiful, this sight. Everything was going so well, looking lovely. And guess what? He went for that land. It was next to Sodoma and Gomorrah. And Abraham, who asked him and said, come with me because I love you, was now left with the gray land. Imagine somebody you brought from somewhere when they have got an opportunity to choose. They forget about you. It's all about them. What am I saying? Let's learn not to make selfish decisions, especially for people that helped us before. And in this world where we live, unfortunately, you make good decisions for people, including them, covering them, but when there is their turn to make decisions, they exclude you, they only think about themselves. This is what is good, I'm going there. I will take everything. But what about Abraham, who was your senior, who came before you? What am I saying? Even in families. Sometimes when you're sitting with your families, you're born again. Many of you are Christians. They place a tray with with big meat, everything there, and the small pieces of meat. You are sitting here with your father. They give you an opportunity. They say, no, choose. You somehow go for the greater meat, the bigger portion. What went wrong? Where is the respect? And like Lord, I will tell you, you might not go far. Sodom and Gomorrah had to be on fire. And many of his things were affected. Beloved, when we make our choices, it is good to make a choice but do not allow your choice to destroy and to harm other people. Are we together? We are Christians. We are for life. We are not here to destroy lives. Your choices must always be about making, making people live, not to die. The, po the, the, the next portion I want to bring up, which is the last scripture for tonight, I will just make a quotation. Go and read it. You will see. In the book of Daniel, this is powerful. Chapter number 3, verse number 14 to verse number 18. There is young guys. There is young guys who had a choice to make. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were faced with the king. And they had to make a choice. And the Bible says, thank you, our worshipers are coming. The Lord bless you. They had to make a choice. So I want to say this. They were saving God and the community and their king of Babylon in that time under King Nebuchadnezzar. They made a decree and a decision that anyone who does not worship a statue that was erected but worship any other god, that person will be cast into the lake of fire. And these young boys, they had to make a decision under that threat. You can imagine. What am I saying? Sometimes at work, they will threaten you and say, if you do this, we will do this. Have you ever made that decision where sometimes you say, I want to do th this, and your senior members of the family threaten you? Your boss at work threaten you. So this one, I call it an aggressive decision that you can ever make for yourself. Where even if it, it, it involves death and life, you still stand and say, because I know the God that we serve. He took us out of Egypt under the mighty King Pharaoh, and he allowed us to be here. Even tonight, he will save us. And sometimes you must come to that place where you say, even if he doesn't save us, I will stand for the truth. I will stand for his word. Why am I saying this? Beloved, everything else is going to pass away with time. But the word of God that you are standing upon when you make your decision will never go anywhere. It will remain forever. One day when you will be judged, the measure of that judgment will be based on the weight. Whenever you make your decisions and your choices, I want to urge you 
make them based on the word of God. Your pastors and the other community faith leaders, they will not be there when judgment is going to be made against you one day. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 10, all of us, one day we will be standing at the judgment seat before the throne of God. And we will be accounting for what we did whilst we were in the flesh. What am I saying? It's painful, beloved, that this flesh is going to get you into enjoying things here. But when you go to heaven, the flesh will remain and you will be accounting alone. How awful is that? Flesh is cruel. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This flesh will mislead me and you. We need to be careful when we make these decisions. I want to say in my closure tonight, everyone has got a potential to make a choice. If you don't learn to make a choice, this world will make choices for you. They always take chances. In Babylon, in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, they made a choice for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and said, you will serve the statue. And thank God that on top of the choice that was made, they made a greater choice. If people make choice about your life, you can still make another greater choice about their choices. It is always good to be in the presence of the Lord. It is always be good to be on the side of the Lord. The Lord is for you. The Lord is for you. The Lord is for me. And he will never ever be against us. Tonight, with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you are here, you want to make a choice to say, I want to serve this God you are talking about, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the Father of Jesus Christ. With no one looking around, you can just slip your hand up and make that choice. Do not fear. Do not fear. Yes, thank you. I see that hand over there. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you right there. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Thank you right there. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to bow our, as, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, we, we pray together this prayer. Let's say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I have heard your word and I am making a choice to serve you in the name of Jesus. With my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that Jesus Christ died and rose again on the third day and now is seated on the right hand of God and he is alive forevermore. I accept him in my life to live with me and to dine with me. In Jesus' name, amen.